Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to our supplemental video on sections two and three of chapter five. Now, in the last section, we introduced the concept of internal energy. We're going to carry on with that concept today and then get into a new topic called enthalpy. Now, just to recap, internal energy is the energy of the system. Now, this change in energy of the system can be exchanged as heat or work. We know what heat is and we know what work is based on our last discussion. So delta E can be defined in terms of heat plus work. Now, the internal energy is based on the system. Let's say I am a system in this case, and everything outside of me is the surrounding. So when heat or work are added to the system, me, so some external source blows heat on me, or and or someone pushes me, that is both heat being added to me and work being done on me. So that gives me both a positive Q value and a positive W value for heat and work. When that's, when that's true, when that's happening, then delta E, the internal energy, increases. And that should make sense. Positive Q, positive W gives you two positive numbers being added together. Positive delta E, it goes up. The opposite is true as well. If I'm still the system, let's say I push heat out this way and I push up on something, I'm doing work on the surroundings. I'm putting heat out from the system to the surroundings. When that is the case, we have a negative Q value and a negative W value and internal energy decreases. Now, internal energy can also be categorized in this family called state functions. A state function from your book's definition is a property of a system that is determined by specifying the system's condition or state. I find that that can be a little confusing at times. So my definition, the Harrison definition, is that it's a measurable quantity, a state function is a measurable quantity about matter as it does nothing. Meaning something you can measure as a substance just sits. For example, mass, length, volume, pressure, temperature, and internal energy. Now, the value of a state function is pathway independent, meaning it doesn't depend on the path it takes to get from one state to another. Meaning, really in black here, we only care about the overall change. So for example, if we're measuring energy, if we start with some initial energy here, and we go through some process to get to another energy state, then all we really care about is the overall change. E2 minus E1 giving me my change in energy numerically. We don't really care about the path that it's taken in terms of a state function. So in terms of these, mass, length, volume, pressure, temperature, internal energy, we don't really care about the path. We just care about the before and the after, the overall snapshot. So we know that delta E is equal to Q plus W. So delta E is a state function. So although delta E does not depend on how the change occurs, Q and W do. The specific amounts of heat and work produced, they do depend on the way in which the change does occur. So Q and W, these are not state functions, but they do help define the state function delta E. Now, much of our chapter is going to be based on this next state function. This next state, fu next state function is called enthalpy. This is section 5.3 very, you know, brief synopsis of it. So as we look at the different phenomena in our world, you know, ponds freezing over, ponds melting, anything happening in our world, radiation, etc., we observe heat flow. And as we observe heat flowing in and out of a system, we can characterize that heat flow in terms of pressure, volume, and internal energy. These three things are state functions. When we combine pressure, volume, and internal energy together in a certain mathematical way, we can then form a new state function called enthalpy, given by letter H. Now, enthalpy, H, is equal to your internal energy plus your pressure times your volume. We're going to observe enthalpy in this case with or under the conditions of constant pressure. So, we're observing heat flow under constant pressure. P is constant. It's going to help to see how this is related to work, because we know delta E depends on 
work. We just talked about observing heat, so let's bring work into the mix here. Work is equal to negative P times delta V. This negative is just going to keep everything mathematically uh, balanced. But let's talk about the delta V. So let's say this balloon here, the inside of the balloon here is my system. If I'm going to do work on my surroundings, that means I need to put more in, more gas into the system here. So right now, the inside of the balloon is the system. If I blow into the balloon, the balloon expands, meaning all the particles that were around the balloon now were pushed away, meaning the system did work on the surroundings. So work is done on the surroundings as volume increases inside. So if P is always positive or zero, the volume of the system, when it expands, so the inside of the balloon was the system, when the volume of my system expanded, the system does work on the surroundings, which is the atmosphere outside the balloon. So work is considered to be negative. Why negative? Well, mathematically, if your delta V is positive, a positive number times a constant pressure that's either positive or zero will give you a negative number. Okay. And if it's positive, of course, if it's zero, obviously, then you know what's, what's going on there. But mathematically, if it's positive, you get a negative work value. Now, let's say I reverse that. The system is still the inside of the balloon, but if the surroundings here, I have gas pressure all around this balloon right now. If that gas starts to work on the outside of the balloon, that balloon can start to deflate, and that is a compression. So your volume has decreased. So if your delta V is negative, or if it decreases, that means your surrounding does work on the system. If the surrounding does work on the system, then your work value is positive. And that's given by a negative delta V, negative times a negative gives you a positive W. Now, since enthalpy is a state function, all we really care about is how enthalpy changes from beginning to end. So we care about delta H here. So delta H is equal to, we also care about how E changes and how P and V change. So if we put deltas here, we care about how delta H equals delta E plus P times delta V. Since P is constant, it doesn't get a delta. It doesn't change. So we just take the delta off of that. Now we know that delta E from before equals Q plus W. We know that work from before equals negative P delta V. So if I do some substitution here, I substitute work in for this work here. I get delta E equals Q minus P delta V. And if I plug delta E in for the delta E here, I get delta H equals Q minus PV, that's my substitution for work, plus P delta V that I had originally up here. So this delta E here is just what's in red. So I substituted in delta V. If I simplify this, I get negative P delta V plus P delta V, which cancels out. So your change in enthalpy is really just Q, your heat. So your change in enthalpy, delta H, equals the heat lost or gained at constant pressure. So when delta H is positive, this means your system has gained heat. From our last video lecture, that means it's endothermic. The system is endothermic, or the, the environment's endothermic. Delta H, when it's negative, that means the system loses heat. So that is exothermic. Gentlemen, take your notes. Work on your problem set. Adios.